Good morning. I am so excited to spend the next couple days with you again. These couple day vlogs seem to be where it's at right now <laughs> with how little I actually do in a day thanks to the gallstones and the hernia and all the things. But we are getting so close to baby time and so documenting this time is so special for me but also hopefully gives you some inspiration. Today we have our homeschool co-op so we've been busy cleaning, getting ready for that. I do need to get some roasts on the smoker. I'll leave that recipe for you down below. I like to have something cooking since we're busy all afternoon with company and then I think we might make pulled pork sandwiches. Some of you have been asking for a recipe for white bread, for those of you that are not sourdough girls. I don't make it often, but this weekend I do need to also make that. We have some sourdough recipes, we have a lot of homemaking to get done, and it looks like there's another snow day in the forecast as well. So I hope that you are inspired today. Let me know in the comments below what you are working on in these January days and let's get right into it. Oh and before we go I'm going to show you the dresser because I did finish painting it but so many of you have been asking, commenting, emailing, DMing what that color is and I wish I could tell you but we actually just got our um, headboard fabric match, color matched when we did the closet doors and that's the same color we're using now on the dresser. So it's not an actual like Benjamin Moore <laughs> paint color. So they just have it saved under our file now. I don't know if there's a way that I could share that with you somehow, um, but that's why I've not been telling you all the colors because I, it doesn't have a name, but I do really love it. It's the perfect like kind of, vintage neutral green, but that's the story behind that. While we're in our room here, we've been doing a couple things. So I got bedside tables, you can see the box down here, from Wayfair. One is up over on this side and love it so much, but it's a pain to put together. It is like very involved. And then I also got this one. I just had this comforter in the attic, but it's really fun to kind of switch things up sometimes. This one is a couple years old from Parachute Home. And anyway, so I love that. I have that still the same Brooklyn and sheets as before. And then here, we have the now finished dresser. So anyway, those are a couple little tiny improvements we've been making. I do need to put our crib together. I love to just have a mini crib for especially the first like six months of baby's life. So that needs to happen, but it's exciting to see some of these little touches come together in our bedroom a while. next day and yes it is another full-on snow day they are calling four to eight inches today I just took a couple of pictures out here I feel like I've hardly taken any pictures pregnant and it's kind of an exciting milestone because I'm tomorrow 37 weeks so big milestone I'm freezing out here so I'm gonna go <laughs> in and uh, do school with the kiddos but cheers for another day in the snow globe <laughs>
Um, about maybe five inches? About three inches there. <laughs> it started snowing like six o'clock this morning. It is about 1.30 right now and it is still snowing. It's so pretty. But I don't know what it is about these like snowy, well rainy days too. I guess whenever it precipitates. <laughs> I just get this urge to bake something. So I'm gonna try to whip up some apple muffins today. I have some apples on hand and normally I would do this recipe with butter with the gallstone situation right now. I'm not doing butter so I'm gonna try to substitute with avocado oil and see if that's any good. So I will leave the recipe for you in the description box but feel free to swap out avocado oil back for butter which is what I usually do but who knows, maybe it'll be even better. are from Amazon. I have them linked in my Amazon storefront. I'm gonna pop these in here and then I also made this, it's like a streusel topping that is super simple but I also have that in the description box. So we're gonna top it with that, pop them in the oven. I cannot wait to try these.
don't see It heals my heart Saves my soul It's the end Grace, grace, grace Over me It's your grace, grace Don't deserve a thing Opened up your arms Give it all the way It's your grace, grace, grace Over me Oh, I fail, Lord, for a time, time again Never stop you Never stops you Oh, you're loving me, loving me to the end And you're making me new It heals my heart It saves my soul It's the air I'm breathing Your grace, grace, grace Okay, finished up some sourdough bread this morning. I feel like kind of a way of meal prepping, if you will, is um, I like to have some staples like that on hand. I also made some flour tortillas a couple days ago, doing a whole bunch of bread, maybe some granola, and then I honestly don't make a ton of freezer meals aside from that. I do have some chili going in the instant pot here that I think I'm going to freeze, but my mom usually comes for two weeks whenever one of our babies is born. This time it might be split between my mom and my sister, but they literally do everything, cooking, cleaning, like all the things. It is the biggest gift, something that I hope I can pass on to my girls when they have babies. But anyways, all that to say, normally till after the two weeks, I am so ready to get back in the kitchen and back into routine. And so I find like for myself, if there was ever a time to make freezer meals, it would be before I get pregnant, like when I have all that morning sickness. So again, I feel like I'm not quite your like stereotypical pregnant lady in how my body handles things. But some of you guys have been wondering about a non-sourdough recipe. And I did my sourdough this morning. Now I'm gonna make some white bread for all of you that have been wishing for that. It is super easy. Um, I did get this recipe from my friend Heidi over on Instagram, and I'll leave her Instagram handle down below. It is delicious. It is very like fluffy, kind of your classic like sandwich bread recipes. To do that, I'm gonna take one cup of brown sugar. You can also use white sugar. I just use whatever I have on hand. And then I have a tablespoon of salt, and we're gonna grab half a cup. These are instant potato flakes surprisingly enough I go in here and then also half a cup of avocado oil three tablespoons of yeast and then four cups of warm water and I'm just gonna gently mix that around to kind of dissolve the sugar and then we're gonna let that sit for 10 minutes before we add the flour Wow, what a flattering view. <laughs> but I am ready to put my flour in here. The recipe that Heidi does, she says 11 cups flour. I'm guessing that that is the all-purpose flour. I like to use King Arthur's, um, it's called the special patent flour, I think. That's what I use in my sourdough, and it's a little bit more of like a bread flour, so I will usually do nine to 10 cups, and that seems to be about the right consistency. But I'm gonna add that in now, let the mixer run for seven minutes, and then we are going to put it into a grease bowl and cover it and let it rise for an hour. This is what we're looking like. Do you see all those bubbles?
pretty quiet but I just put the bread into pans as you saw poked some holes in there just keeps them from getting big air bubbles um, when they bake so I'm gonna let these rise for another about 30 minutes and then we're gonna bake them <laughs> get ready for this baby. I have been spending the morning with a lot of contractions, Braxton Hicks, and I am currently 37 and a half-ish weeks. <clears throat> My earliest came exactly 37. Latest was one day past due, and I'm suddenly realizing like, Oh my goodness, Steph, we need to make sure we are ready. <laughs> so I have so much pressure <laughs> going on. I I don't know if this is like the start of labor or if it's just like that he's dropped, but like things are feeling very different today. <laughs> Let's talk while we work on my tea. I am that person that out of three of my four babies so far, I have been eight or nine centimeters until we've either arrived at the hospital or midwife has come all of that and so <laughs> I cannot wait until I know that I'm in labor no matter how long I have to wait it is time to have these things ready so I was over in the den and the plan is what do you think of my giant bag of red raspberry tea <laughs> this is loose leaf tea I'm gonna just put some of that into my jar here and then we'll steep it nice and strong I am not dead set on a home birth, but that's the plan as of now. I will also be packing a hospital bag just in case because I would rather be over prepared than under prepared. So first up, I have some home birth stuff in here to look at. Josh asked me, babe, where would you like to give birth? And I was like, I've had such a hard time deciding between home and hospital. I've actually had home, hospital, and birth center births. Birth center was my least favorite, so that one is out of the question. Many people are like, really? Why? And the reason is because I feel like you get kind of the worst of both worlds. I got there being ready to push, so I was literally 9 centimeters, barely could even get inside, basically birthed the baby in half an hour, and we were out of there again within three hours I think it was and so it's like you don't have the comforts of your own home and just crawling into your own bed after who you guys <laughs> I don't know what's happened overnight I'm just getting a lot of contractions today it's very normal for me to be four ish centimeters dilated till I actually go into labor so it could just be that that's what's happening but I have not had this before in this pregnancy so we're seeing signs <laughs> of things at least heading in the right direction but what I was gonna say is with the with the birth center birth then you don't have the luxury of your own bed right after giving birth or even giving birth in bed but you don't either have the luxury of being pampered in the hospital for a couple of days and being brought everything so you have that immediate car drive after and I don't know I know a lot of people love it and if you're pregnant and planning on that don't let this discourage you it's just my own personal preference but I did have really good hospital birth experiences and I did have a really good home birth experience and so um, it was kind of between those two. I was having a lot of trouble finding a midwife who would actually deliver in the hospital and I do much prefer seeing a midwife over an OBGYN just again personal preference but I do want to be ready for whatever. So all that to say where I want to give birth I was like well Ideally, <laughs> 
I would give birth in this room. This is like where our fireplace is. It's right next to the kitchen. I know it's been a while since I did a home tour, which I guess I should do that again sometime, but if you're not familiar with the layout of our home, basically our bedroom is pretty far removed from like all the main living areas. It's upstairs, it's off to the side, it's not next to a bathroom, and so that's where I gave birth last time. But I was like, man, I'm so tired of feeling so like lonely this pregnancy, just with having to stay home so much with all of my health things that have transpired over the past eight and a half-ish months that I would just love to be somewhere where I can kind of be with the kids and with you and with my mom or sister and just to be more central and still be able to like take it easy in bed. And so um, I think he's actually going to move our bed into this room for a couple of weeks. It is so sweet of him. I feel kind of bad, but Everyone that I've mentioned my crazy idea to is like, oh, that's such a good idea. So uh, this is not our living room. We do have a separate living room. So we'll still have that for like sitting and hanging out. But that's the actual plan. And then we do also have the bathroom right next to this. We have the kitchen is also right off of this room. And then the first big one, which by the way, these baskets are from Ikea, and I liked the idea of having them for storage organization, but they don't hold up very well. You can tell they kind of like cave in and stuff, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. These I like a lot better, but they're actually too tall for these shelves, so anyway. First and most obvious, this big thing, <laughs> this is the birthing pool so okay yep I mm -hmm. <laughs> okay I've never actually given birth in water before or late well I did labor in a shower once but I've heard so many people love it I'll insert a picture here of the one that this is and it's also linked in my Amazon storefront but it has good reviews it actually has like a cushiony thing on the bottom of the pool and it has handles and stuff. Anyway, I've been kind of contemplating a water birth for a while and I've just heard of so many people that love their water births and so Josh is like, maybe you should order it so that you at least have it and then yeah, I guess we'll see if we actually get in it or not. But that's what that giant white thing is. I have some very random things. One of the things on my birth supply list is just this um, bulb syringe for the baby. <laughs> and then I have an entire pack of combs. Now, uh, if you haven't already heard, I've heard a lot of people rave about this. Again, I don't have experience, so talk to me in a couple weeks, maybe a couple days, <laughs> about how it went using these in labor. But I've heard of a lot of people really love it. Basically, what you do is hold it like this, where the bristles push into the palm of your hand. And the science <laughs> that I've heard behind that is that your brain registers the pain of this like pushing into your hand faster than it registers like the pain of the contraction. So essentially it's just like a distraction like mechanism. So I thought, you know what, cones are cheap enough that it's worth a try. And then I have a couple more things on this side. Um, we have these disposable under pads, which are just the like chucks puppy pads or whatever, 24 by 36, 15 pads in here. I have the lovely Perry bottle. This one I have <laughs> for its obvious use, but I also have another one upstairs that I need to bring down here yet. Whoo, it's in my back too. Wow, y'all. <laughs> I don't know how much I will be filming today. I lay down for a bit before filming and it was like happening while I was laying down too, so at least we're making progress. I do have another one similar to this upstairs and I need to have two on hand. One needs to have some like avocado or coconut oil in it for like lubrication, I guess for like, you know, stretching things better without tearing or possibly to use on the baby's bottom, I think it said. I need to look that up a little more. And then of course, we have our lovely adult diapers. So at least they're cute, right? They're kind of pink. They kind of have this lace pattern. I mean, we should be feeling fashionable. 
I am so grateful I've never bled heavily after birth. I've actually bled very little in some of my births, which I do have a tincture that really helps with that. Um, and I'm really praying that that's the case again this time, especially having dealt with low iron throughout this pregnancy. I'm taking a lot of iron, so I, I'm not anemic anymore, but um, it's still on the lower side and just obviously something that you don't want to deal with if you don't have to. These are still just so handy to have especially for the first like, I don't know, two, three-ish days postpartum, just get to throw them out and not worry about cleaning them. I have on my birth supply list, she also wants us to have a hot water bottle. I've never used one of these in labor, but I had really bad back labor last time and I can just imagine that this would feel really good. By the way, isn't it so cute too? It's like this Sherpa fabric. It's also linked in my Amazon storefront. But this I want to keep on hand even after the birth just for, I mean, there's so many ways to use a hot water bottle and I've never actually owned one. This is a queen mattress bag. I, I've never had the bag before. You just need a piece of plastic. But I saw this and I was like, all right, sure, whatever. The way that I make the bed for birth is a nice sheet and then I'll put a plastic something over top to catch all the mess and then put kind of an older... A sheet that I don't care about on top and that way once you've given birth you can just kind of take the plastic and that top sheet and throw it out and, and your bed is already made nicely so this is everything that I have right now I need to grab my list <laughs> and make note of what I need to add to this collection okay I have a couple things to get at the grocery store peroxide and paper towels and I think everything else I have just in the kitchen so that is good news um, I'm gonna put these back in here aside from the combs none of this is stuff that I would take to the hospital I'm very like minimal when it comes to packing hospital bags I mean they have all the adult diapers <laughs> baby diapers basically everything aside from I need clothes for the baby I need clothes for myself I like to take my supplements phone charger camera and Bible that's probably basically what I'm going to pack and maybe I'm gonna pack some combs this time <laughs> I know that there's a lot of things that you can take like People like to take their own pillow or a nursing pillow and your own like um, gown situation. I normally actually just like to wear normal clothes pretty soon after. There's so many extras you can take and you can totally take those along and be kind of more bougie. But for myself, it's been fine with what they have like as far as their pillows or I know people take like slippers and all the things. I'm, I'm just way more minimal. I'm like, first of all, I'm not planning to be there this time. But second of all, it's such a short amount of time. It's hardly worth the hassle of all those things. And a lot of those things I found I don't even use anyway. So pack a couple of those things. I need to bring baby's diapers down here. I have them all in our dresser upstairs. But if we actually make this a little like birthing suite, I should bring some of those down here. I have to talk about my, my birth ball, okay? This thing is not on my birth supply list, but it is something I highly recommend for um, giving birth. This is, what brand is this? I just got it off of Amazon. It is a great size, urban fit. I'll also have that in my Amazon storefront, but this is like my favorite birthing tool. Uh, I know different things work for different people. I have labored on one of these so many times and works really well for me. In fact, with one of my labors, I was I was like, I, there's no way I can sit in a, in a van seat. And so I actually ended up sitting on the birthing ball, bouncing on the way to the hospital and I was like eating breakfast. Um, while driving there obviously I couldn't be buckled then but I had to it was like there was no way that you're making me sit on a hard seat so anyways I have already been bouncing on here I'll eat like meals sitting on here use it as my chair it is my favorite so highly recommend and the kids really also enjoy playing with it so I think I'm gonna leave the rest of it in here a little bit longer but that is gonna be good I'm going to take at least a little bit out. I'm thirsty for it. There, now that can at least cool 
cool off a little quicker, which by the way, how cute is this mug? Got it off of Amazon, I can link it down below as well. Isn't that so cute for like Valentine's Day or something? I don't really like raspberry tea hot. So I might add some ice to that and drink it cold, but at least it can start cooling a while and then it's super refreshing. It was pretty obvious I wasn't getting much more done. I actually just got back in from a little walk outside now. But I hope you enjoyed following along today. Thank you so much for being here, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, friends. Golden, golden thing.